Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about Gen V, the Amazon Prime show that is a spin off from The Boys that takes place in The Boys universe. And there is potential spoiler alert for The Boys season one through three, seasons one through three, and then absolutely spoilers for Gen V. Possibly the first two, maybe three episodes we're going to talk about and see how far each of us have watched. I'm up to date. I think Cheryl has watched up to episode three, but we'll see. Um, so if you haven't seen them, episode two, there you go. So spoiler alert for up to episode two of Gen V. So if you haven't seen up to there, go ahead and check it out on Amazon Prime. Then come back and see what we had to say about it. But let's go ahead and jump right in. Gen V. Oh, my God. <laughs> the beginning of this show. The, the first the first opening scene of this show had me going like this is definitely the boys but this feels like worse, worse. in some cases <laughs> than what you see on the boys a little bit <laughs> yeah it's almost kind of like you know it's from the boys but then i feel like you block out that like kind of violence from the boys because the characters are so compelling and the stakes are so compelling um mm -hmm. and so you kind of go into this like oh it's gonna be about like the 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 heroes and like and and stuff like like people have superpowers but they're not necessarily heroes and then you mm -hmm. see this like massacre and you're like oh yeah i forgot how <laughs> bloody the boys was thanks for reminding me that this is what we're getting ourselves into yep the show wants you to know right away and like we said we're where we said that there's gonna be spoilers so the main character maria um she or marie excuse me marie she is starts off with her as a kid and like she's like an adolescent like what like 12 or something 12 13 and she starts feeling a little weird and goes to the bathroom and her mom suspects and even you as the viewer you start to suspect that you know what's happening it's based on how the mom is responding because the mom is like concerned but also doesn't seem worried um and <laughs> it is oh you didn't suspect it okay I, I did i was like she's pregnant i was like no she's having her period for the first time yeah so and and that's what you and that's what you realize it's like oh, okay and it's and it's funny because you it's played up as kind of like this um it doesn't it's not played up as like a bad thing or a bad moment it's actually kind of like it gives you the feeling that this is about to be like a coming of age moment where the mom is going to bond with her daughter because she understands what's happening but the daughter is confused and not really understanding it but the, because it's the boys it can never be that simple so what ends up happening is that she ends because she is bleeding and her powers are based around blood. She ends up controlling it, and it's floating in her hand and or floating in the air around her hand, and she doesn't really understand it. Um, and so she starts to little kind of freak out, and so her freaking out makes her mom freak out. When her mom thought it was something simple, now her mom is worried. So her mom like bust into the bathroom and as soon as she busts in marie gets scared and accidentally shoots the blood into like a bladed projectile that instantly goes through her mom's throat and kills her mom and then her father runs upstairs to check on her to see what happens sees his wife dead and is immediately like horrified runs in and marie gets even more afraid and ends up killing him too in a, in a giant explosion of even more blood using the blood that actually came from her mother to then kill him so right away you it just it just went horribly wrong and then her sister gets there and it's just like oh my gosh and then we flash forward and now we're getting into like the crux of the show but that opening as soon as i saw that opening i was like okay that's right that's what this is we're in the boys universe what else y'all got for me at this point <laughs> Yeah, but then it kind of eases back into it does. a regular show. So I really do feel like it was a good setup for mm -hmm. establishing this character that we're going to be following and also still reminding us what kind of show this is. Um, so I guess even if you haven't seen The Boys yet, it would still kind of give you an idea of like um, what this world is like. So mm -hmm. I almost feel like you don't really need to have seen the boys. I mean, you do, but 
but there's no like mystery to it. Like they they're tell they're right. kind of giving you the information that you need to know to understand the show. Um, and if you had seen the boys, it's like bonus because then you really understand where this falls in the world and what time this is taking, taking place. place. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because there's a lot of um, Easter eggs in the show, but um, because of the things that happened in season three, there are references to what happened at the end of season three within the show. So you understand the context that, okay, this show is taking place after season three. So in many ways, this season can almost feel like the boys season 3.5 because we're seeing kind of not exactly how the characters that were involved in those situations are reacting to those situations now, but we're seeing how the world around those events is interacting with those events. So like we see a clip of what's happening with the Homelander and how he's going on trial for what he did at the end of season three. We see people talking or hear people talking about Queen Maeve and how she died, where, you know, if you watch the show, you understand that she didn't die, but in the context of the world, everybody thinks she did. So it's really interesting to see how people are reacting to that because it is easy to forget. I was like, wait a second, did Maeve die? And then I had to remember, oh no, that's right. It seemed like she died she lost her powers and now is in hiding. So, and hopefully living happily ever after. So yeah, so there's these elements of the show that are tied to the boys as a universe, but the crux of the show is not about that. It's if the bo- where the boys was about like regular people taking on superpowered individuals, this show is about what it means to be a superpowered individual in this corporatized world where superpowers are co- are basically turned into a commodity for getting famous and rich and having money. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do still feel like the social commentary is similar. Um, That's there's, true. there's a lot of touch on like social media um, and how, you know, fake it is. Like it doesn't really reflect mm-hmm. the true nature of true. someone. It's just all for show. Um, and then there's the whole thing about like monetization and like, you know, using social media to rise to power and, you know, make money off of something, um, not based off of merit or talent, just based off of how well you can show yourself off, um, and pretend to be useful. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I think the difference though, is like, now you have all these adolescents who, are you know in those kind of like they're put in a crossroads where they have to um make a decision you know they're not as tainted by um i guess money especially um our main character she's really at a crossroads because she grew up with nothing and now she has Mm -hmm. a chance to get something and she also almost lost the little bit that she did get so um, she's really put on trial for decision making. And so are a couple of the other characters that we have where, you know, they were kind of, you know, doing like the college teen kind of thing where they're making stupid choices um, mm-hmm. without thinking about the consequences. But at the end of the day, they're bred to like go with the flow of like what if you do good on social media then you'll be successful so in their minds like oh that's just what we're supposed to do and like that's all too familiar for us as well like you know we go to college so we get a house we get married and then we have kids but not everyone has to make that choice and i think Mm -hmm. that's the kind of um thing that i'm seeing with some of these characters so it's to me it's kind of like a high school not high school but like a college show it's more for it's more for teens it's more targeted towards teens but could still be enjoyed by adults yeah i see that too and the show does a really good job of setting up the stakes in this first episode like i wasn't sure before like i i watched the trailer but i didn't even remember who was a main character or not so i didn't know who was going to be sticking around or who we were supposed to root for. And so you start meeting some of the main cast and you meet them randomly in different um, spots. Like when you meet Jordan, you meet Jordan because they are actually an obstacle. They're in the way of what Marie wants. She wants to get into this class, but Jordan will not let her into into the class as the, the main guy, Clancy Brown's character, 
I forget his name, Brink, I think it was, Brink's TA, but the, the, in the class is crime fighting because Marie wants to be a hero. And Marie's motivations are driven by the mistake that she made as a child. So, and you get that. You get the reason why she wants to try and save people because she doesn't want to be that person that only hurts someone. So when you meet, when she meets Jordan, who's this character that has the ability to switch between genders and each gender has their own um, unique power set, it's, it's as an antagonist. So you're not even sure if this character is going to be someone that is going to be a character that you're going to root for. And then you meet some of the other parts of that group because Marie ends up getting Im invited out to like the popular kids, basically. And these are the kids that are the top ranked um, power people in the school. And so you have Andre, who's kind of like a Magneto, a golden boy who has the ability to like flame up and like cover his body in flames and, you know, fly and do all that and do all that other stuff and there's also kate who has the ability to of suggestion where if she touches you um kind of like rogue where if rogue touches you she takes her powers well but her when she touches you she can control what you do she can suggest what you do so she always walks around wearing these gloves so that people can feel safe around her um presumably so what you were what cheryl was talking about of how they make these kind of dumb decisions they all decide to go out and you know do drugs drink party the normal things the normal things that you know teenagers or you know young adults try to do and so but the thing about this show is that it always wants to remind you that even though having powers is cool and they know that having powers is cool these powers are actively dangerous for regular people because andre tries to show off by doing what looks like like a magic trick using his like magnetic powers gets accidentally bumped by somebody and ends up almost killing someone and when he does that they all run off but marie stays back and uses her powers to save a person's life but because of the fact that the people involved are all top ranking people and they don't want it to get out that they almost killed a person and left them to die they um the school and brink try to put that on Marie and say that she was the one that actually caused the woman to get hurt in the first place, but she also saved her, but they're going to expel her in order to protect everyone else. And so right away, because we know our badly, our, our main character needs this because she was in a foster care um, facility or something like that at the start of the ep at, ep at the start of the episode after the time skip from when she was a kid. And so she's like, I got to keep my head clean. I got to do the right thing. And now she's going to lose everything. And so right away we feel for this character, like what is she going to do? And these other people, they're not all jerks, but at the same time they did a bad thing and they're not the ones that have to pay for it. So the show does a very good job with that. Yeah, and the thing is like the kids, they, they didn't even know what the consequences were. They just thought like, right. oh, nobody saw us. And they had no idea that Marie just got expelled. Because um, the incident with Golden Boy mm -hmm. happens right after um, Brink tells her that she's getting expelled. And so mm -hmm. no one else knows about it. Um, I do think her powers are cool. She's basically a bloodbender. And I think she's yeah, kind of basically. figuring that out. Um, and so, but at first I was like, that kind of sucks that like she has to cut her hands. Cut and herself every she can, time. Yeah, and like the only resource she has is blood so mm -hmm. and that blood has to come from somewhere so that is an interesting limitation but if you have a lot of blood then uh look out <laughs> yeah and and that's why i think they're leaning towards like she definitely seems like she's she's more powerful than she thinks she is mm -hmm. and you start seeing hints of that as you keep going through uh through the show but initially, yeah, she just has the ability to kind of utilize her own blood as a weapon. But when she heals that person, she's actually taking that person's blood and controlling it to put it back inside her and to, like, clot it. So you start to realize that there's a hint that there's actually something more to her powers than what she suspects. And that's another thing I really like. I like having you give these people powers where it's just like, your power is to do this. And then, but in doing this... There's different ways you can do this thing that is a part of your power set. And it's always within the realm of it is your powers. You're never going to all of a sudden start like, you know, bending water. But 
it's it's very well done in that it feels believable in the context of that world. So I really I really like how they're handling her and I like all the main characters. I like everybody. I like I think every character that we just mentioned, even Jordan who comes across like a jerk the first time you meet them, they're all like really great characters and they're interesting. And one of the characters I didn't think I would like at all, which was Kate, cuz mm -hmm. she just had that look. She had that look like she was just going to be one of those characters you just hated. She's a great character. She's mm -hmm. done very well. So that's one of the things I can absolutely say positively about this show. It's just like, just like the boys, the characterizations of these um, of these people are intriguing and interesting. And we didn't even talk about Emma, but Emma's another one. That's the that's uh, Marie's roommate, and she has the ability to get small. But in order to get small, she has to uh, regurgitate mm -hmm. food or yeah something. And so it's like one of those kind of like monkey paw things of yeah, you got a powers, but you know, it's going to cost you something every time you use them. Um, and then that plays into, like, some of her challenges growing up and, like, with her parents or with her mom and everything else. So all these characters, all these in, uh, things that you're seeing with them are very interesting. And then you have, like, the bloody moments that pop up every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, just to piggyback on what you're saying about the, inter the interesting characters, um, I think has a lot to do with the fact that they have layers um, mm -hmm. They're not single dimensional. They're not just one kind of person. Um, and no one seems like a bad guy. If anything, mm -hmm. um, the bad guy is still Vought. Yeah. And, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out um, something to do with uh, Golden Boy's brother. Now, what are they trying to solve the mystery of, like, why did Golden Boy do that? Because it was really unlike him and they all seem like yeah they, i think they first are introduced as like oh it's gonna be that kind of character mm -hmm, but then the right. more you get to know them you're like oh it's not like they're actually they're actually regular people and um i'm slowly kind of seeing that like they're all gonna have different motivations and then kind of come together um just like in the boys to you know solve a common goal against a common enemy um or like um i forget his name um not jordan the other guy Lo is it logan andre andre yeah i think of logan from um andre and kate want to figure out what happened to their friend golden boy and then um gosh what's her name <laughs> marie? the thing yes marie um she's just trying to survive and then Jordan wants to um, become number one. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know what's going on with the roommate, but I think she's going to have some part to play in this team as well. So I think this is the group, um, two episodes that really set the stage. Uh, the roommate has something kind of separate going on, and she's kind of dealing yeah. with her own thing. But she's still connected, and I think she's going to end up being part of the group. Right. Yeah. And um, one of the things I also want to touch on is that even Marie, as because we were talking about how characters are well-rounded, even though Marie is like, we could say is our main character, she isn't without fault herself. One of the challenges that she's met with is after the whole thing with Golden Boy happens, she has to run for her life. And Jordan, the person that we were seeing as an antagonist to, to Marie earlier, steps in and actually saves Marie by fighting their fighting their friend golden boy but because of jordan's power and how it isn't a like mar marketable power in certain areas they pretend like jordan didn't do anything so like this show still has a social commentary like all over the place and so then jordan approaches marie and wanting to ask marie to do the right thing and tell them what actually happened tell them that Jordan was the one that fought Golden Boy and not Marie and Andre because they didn't actually fight him. And Marie has this moment where I understood it. It was a messed up thing, but I understood it where Marie looks at her like um at Jordan and says, "What do I I don't owe you anything because I was literally going to get expelled because of what you guys did. And then on top of that, you were the reason that I couldn't get into the class that I wanted." And if I had gotten expelled, it's not like you would have been like, oh, no, 
Marie didn't do that, it's fine. Y'all would have let me just disappear because you don't really care about me at the end of the day. So I'm going to take mine. And I was like, you know what? I get you. I get that. But at the same time, what what uh, Marie's doing is wrong because she's taking credit for something she didn't do. And so you had this moment where her and Jordan had a moment where it's like, well, please just tell the truth. And so Marie really wrestled with it. But when it came down to the point where she could actually do the right thing, she didn't. So that's the, that's, that's the show. These mm -hmm. characters, they're not perfect. They're imperfect. And they have places to go and ways to grow. And there's still plenty to see. But I think that all of this, it just makes it a fun show to watch. And even though it's not like the boys, like a lot of the, the, the risk you run with spinoffs is that people always say, well, the spinoff isn't as good as the original or it can feel like a cash grab and it ends up not being a great show. To me, Gen V feels like it's different than the boys as far as like the cast of characters and how they interact with each other and even like the setting because we're on a college campus as opposed to just being out in the regular world. But I would say that Gen V offers something that is different than the boys, but it's not worse than the boys. I think that both shows have something unique and interesting to offer, and I would recommend either show because I think that they're both fun to watch. I do feel like this is a little bit too, like, teenager for me. Um, mm -hmm. Not, like, a ton. Like, I'll, I still want to watch it and see, um, you know, what's going to end up happening. I still don't really, like, you know, the big the big bad is, is still mm -hmm. not really revealed. Uh, at least not for me by episode two. Um, mm -hmm. I just know that there's something going on with the school and the woods and everything. Um, right. And so that i'm interested in um but it's it's so different from the boys because like in the boys mm -hmm. you're like oh shit homelander is not <laughs> a good guy <laughs> no he's scary uh right. and you don't really get anything like that from this That's show true. at least not yet um mm -hmm. to my knowledge um, so I don't feel like the stakes are as high, but I do think the world building is still good. It's still, you know, consistent with the boys in terms of like the world and the, mm -hmm. the, the characters, the people that live in this reality. Um, and I think that, um, the kids are like, you know, it's just interesting to be watching a moral dilemma between kids who are still you know figuring out right. you know whether or not they're going to be good heroes or bad heroes um, right and it, and they all and they all seem like they want to do the right thing yeah. but that doesn't mean they necessarily will do the right thing yeah because we've seen like when opportunity is is like you know put before you and you have the choice to do the right thing or the wrong thing the person that you would think would do the right thing did the wrong thing so it kind of just makes this established um establishment that like anyone can do the right or wrong and we don't know what the consequences are going to be just yet um at least for me so mm -hmm. um because i know chris watched more but i think that's you know just having only watched two episodes i think has already been very compelling um because of how interesting this is and i think that's just kind of um like i said consistent with the boys because everyone's just kind of like do we do the right thing or the wrong thing and even like huey mm -hmm. Sometimes he doesn't yeah. do the right thing, even though That's true. and Starlight and they're the two people that you would think would do the right thing, but they do the wrong thing sometimes. So, right. um, like kind of anyone is up for grabs, and it really comes down to, um, like the team, the characters coming together and what they're gonna do. Absolutely. So the last thing that I want to say before I'm I've gotten through all my points is that. I think I have seen a penis in every episode. This show does <laughs> not shy away from showing from showing the uh, ma male genitalia every single episode. I feel like there's only one episode where I haven't seen a penis, but I feel like every episode up until now, I've seen a pe I've seen a penis. So, yeah, <laughs> there, there's a lot of, of that in this show. It's kind of refreshing because usually it's the other way around. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and i'm always like oh you get so close but no cigar mm -hmm. 
Now we're getting all the cigars. <laughs> those, those cigars are there and bare, and you're gonna see them. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you're gonna see the different different looking ones, and you're gonna see different things happening to to them. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not the way that I would like to see them. But yeah. But you can still see, yeah. But they're there, so. I mean, when you yeah. when you see like boobs and TV shows and stuff like that, you know they're doing it for the men, and like they're doing right. it in a way to be pleasing. They're not right. doing. That's not what the no, show no, is at not all. Pleasing mm-hmm. in the show. <laughs> this is not Game of Thrones, y'all. Oh man, but yeah. So, but that's everything that I have to say um, on it. Is there anything else that you want to say before we get out of here? Nope, that was it for me. All right, so that's what we thought about Gen V. What did you guys think about it? Have you seen it? Do you like it? Are you do you are you enjoying it more or less than the boys? About the same? Are you planning on watching it to the till the end? Are you do the seeing the penises not really bother you at all? What have you thought about this and more? Comment below. Let us know. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, subscribe. Even if you don't, though, I've been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and I'm in the woods. <laughs>